Hey guys, first I want to start by saying how amped I am right now, because I just met my idol, Tony Hawk. He was a super nice guy and he even stopped to take a pic with me. Anyways, I'm super stoked for today's episode, because today we're going to talk about the board train. Ford offers a variety of roof heights and wheelbases, which is cool because it allows you to tailor the cabin size to fit your needs. I'm tall, so I need all that extra height I can get. I've bumped my head several times, and let me tell you, it's the worst. Now there's two different wheelbases, a 130 and a 148. Within these wheelbases, you can also choose between regular, extended, or long body. You also have three payload capacity sizes to pick from, a 150, 250, and a 350, which has around a 3,800 pound payload capacity. Now you might be asking what the numbers mean. Well, basically, the bigger the number, the bigger the gross vehicle weight ratings. And what is a gross vehicle weight rating? Well, it counts the curb weight, which is the weight of your vehicle when empty plus the weight of your passengers, fuel, and any other accessories that you may have added. It also includes the tongue weight of your trailer, so if you're towing anything, that added weight on the back hitch is gonna add to that. Now let's talk about my favorite part, the engine. This van is fast. In fact, it really has no business being this fast. I mean, we're talking zero to 60 in 6.8 seconds. That's insane. These impressive numbers are thanks to a turbocharged 3.5 liter V6 that generates 310 horsepower and 400 pounds of torque. There's also a base engine, which is a naturally aspirated 3.5 liter V6, and that provides 275 horsepower and 262 pounds of torque. And you can choose between rear wheel drive and all wheel drive. Now with great speed comes great sacrifice, and you guessed it, the gas mileage on this bad boy is not the best. It gets about 17 miles per gallon, which is a bit less than the 20 miles per gallon the Mercedes gets. Another thing to note for 2021 is that Ford has eliminated the Transit's optional 2-liter diesel powertrain, which is a big time bummer. Another weird quirk of the Transit is that this gas flap, you actually can't open it without opening the door. So it's kind of silly. I mean, I can just picture my girlfriend in the passenger seat and I have to open the door with the wind ripping through. I'm so cold. It's not ideal, but such is life. Now let's talk about the safety features offered through Ford's Copilot 360 packages. These include forward collision warning, which alerts you of a possible collision with the car in front of you, automatic emergency braking, which warns if a front impact is imminent and applies the brakes if you don't respond in time, lane departure warning, which alerts you if the vehicle begins to drift out of its lane, and also automatic high beam headlights. Some additional upgrades include blind spot monitoring, parking sensors, and adaptive cruise control. The interior is pretty sleek and modern looking too. Kind of reminds me of a Ford Explorer. It also drives pretty solid. It's got a quiet cabin, and although the shocks should probably be upgraded, uh, it rides pretty damn smooth with stock suspension. The infotainment system comes with a standard four inch display, uh, but you can upgrade that to an optional eight inch, which to me is worth the money. It has a backup camera, push button parking brake, and selectable drive modes with traction control. I also like the steering. Uh, you know, it feels pretty light and easy to turn and because you're so, you know, toward the front of the vehicle, uh, you kind of just feel like you know exactly where you are and it uh, makes the driving experience really comfortable. Now what makes these vans so exciting is the value. You can pick up a twin turbo all-wheel drive pretty well loaded for about $52,000. That's pretty unbelievable considering I've seen two-wheel drive Ram Promasters going for upwards of 50 grand. Overall, I think I'd pick the Transit over other vans. Sure, a Mercedes Sprinter would be nice, 
but for the price and options, I kind of think it's a no-brainer to go with the Ford. Pretty much everything is going to be more expensive on the Mercedes. Over the lifetime of a van, it can really add up. Plus, the fact that transits are still really affordable in all-wheel drive, it makes it a top pick for me. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Would you do a Mercedes Sprinter, Ford Transit, or Ram Promaster?